Welcome back to the Secrets of the Self-Made. Today I have Lindsay House and Lindsay and I became fast friends. Um, gosh, probably last summer, I think is when we started. We did a few coaching sessions together and she was so gracious to allow me to put her coaching sessions up on um, my podcast, allow some of my audience to see how other coaches get coached. I think that's such a fascinating, um, like behind the scenes, you kind of pull back the curtain and you recognize how everybody can benefit from being coached. And so, um, we had various topics that we coached on, but I just wanted to preference this podcast um, so that if you think she sounds familiar, you're probably right, because um, we were able to coach several times together. So welcome, Lindsay. I am so glad you're here. Oh, Tracy, thank you so much for having me today. I'm truly honored to be with your community I keep saying, I hope I do you proud today. <laughs> oh, you will. So for those of you who don't know Lindsay, I'm just going to give you a little bit of her background. She is an author, a dietitian, and a fitness expert. She really focuses on being an accountability coach. Um, Lindsay is incredibly passionate about rewriting the rules to what success should feel like in the health and fitness world. Lindsay believes that we have to leave the all or nothing mentality behind because nobody can be perfect with food and fitness on the daily. It is crucial that we give ourselves credit for our small daily efforts and believe that small changes make a huge difference. Lindsay has crazy passion for healthy lifestyles and helping individuals find their perfect journey to health and happiness. So you guys can see why we would have her on. She is what I consider to be self-made. Um, so Lindsay, tell us like, what is an accountability coach? How do you provide that service to your clients? I love that you asked because I feel like with everyone's life journey, we think we're starting someplace and then a new door opens and a new door opens and you're like, huh, I didn't think I'd be here. And this is where I am. I, I started as a dietitian, like you said, and a personal trainer. And then I just started noticing what my clients were telling me was, I know what to do. I just need to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking the piece and the place I like to be in is accountability. I love handholding. I love gently guiding more than teaching and instructing. So that's the accountability piece. It's the show up factor. It's making sure that when somebody says this really matters to me in my life, that we're going to put things in place to make sure that they get there, that they can look back over a month or a year and say, I've been working at this. I haven't just been talking about it. Yeah. And that is so desperately needed um, in a lot of different communities, but for sure within the health and fitness community, you're obviously very good at it. You've been doing this for over 20 years. What do you think is the most common struggle amongst your clients? I think definitely accidentally getting into that all or nothing mentality. I feel like I can see clients hit so many successful moments within their week or even within a whole month or longer. And all of a sudden they see somebody else doing it, what they would call better, or they don't feel like they've checked every box and they're only doing some of it well. And instead of giving themselves credit for what's going well, it's, we, we revert, we go, no, nope, I'm, I'm failing. I'm falling off this wagon. And then they stop. And then it's that effort to get people back in that motivated mode and back on track. So I do feel like we've started working a lot more on resiliency and just that jump back on factor versus living in this on or off world. You know, it's more about hitting that reset button immediately and getting back into our intentions for the week. That makes sense. Do you have like a methodology for doing that? I mean, it makes perfect sense that you, as an accountability coach, see this. How do you help your clients? Like, what's the how? Yeah, I love that. It's grown over the years as well. I felt like just seeing clients here and there wasn't enough. So a membership felt really natural to me. So I have 
people who we exist together all month, every month. And every month we start the first week as I call it an accountability week. And so we all reset goals together and take that one week to be really hardcore about it. I come on every day and give a message and we check in on each other. So that first week of the month is always super intense. And then, and then it's like, go out and keep creating and seeing what the rest of the month looks like, knowing that we're going to do that again and again. And I'd really love to see people do it every week as far as hitting that. What are my intentions this week? But I just feel like once a month, at least lets us not go longer before it's time to, to reset and make sure we've tweaked and assessed, you know, how it's yeah. going. Yeah. I love that. I think, you know, I am somebody who loves to plan and, you know, we're recording this on March 1st. And so there's always something so like refreshing, renewing about the beginning of the month. It's like, yeah, like let's go after it. You know, we can kind of shut the door on last month and it's just a nice fresh start. So I love that. Um, tell me a little bit about your grasp uh, methodology that you use. I am a sucker for a framework. I tell all my clients, it's no secret that I have a little peanut brain. And so I need frameworks. I need visuals to kind of help me learn and apply what it is that I learn. And so you've got this GRASP acronym. Tell us about that. Okay. I'm going to give everybody what the acronym is first, just so that they can stop thinking what is GRASP. <laughs> and then I'm going to tell you why it's called GRASP. But the G is garbage in, garbage out. The R is rewrite the rules to success. The A is accountability is the underpinning of everything that we do. The S is stop chasing somebody else's goals. And the P is permission to not be perfect or permission to even fail. And these pillars or this framework for me is what in this 20 years that you mentioned of in this line of work, I've noticed are the pieces when they're strong, someone's journey is normally pretty strong and going well. And when a pillar has fallen away or isn't working for them, then that's kind of our area that we need to focus on because, because even one pillar, and let's just take the G, the grasp or the garbage in, garbage out. If somebody's mindset isn't in the right place, you know this, we're not gonna get ultimately to sustainable goals. We might get quick fixes and we might be able to hit some immediate goals, but that lifelong type of thinking, which I know you and I are both huge advocates of, we don't want it just now. We don't want fast. We want sustainable and our, our people to thrive through the day, right? So each one of these pillars helps somebody thrive. And the reason why I call it a grasp is because this is what I can picture is we have the grasping on one side of us where our accountability is holding us firm. It's making sure that like our eyes drift over to somebody else's paper. And we were like, I was, I was doing better. I was doing walks, but I'm not running a marathon. And you know, and when our eyes drift to somebody else, then we can start to go, well, maybe we're not doing so hot. Maybe we're not doing as well. So one part of the grasping is just our accountability system holding us steady. The other part is you can picture that it's a negative grasp. It's when something's tugging us out of our momentum, out of our motivation. And so I want to think of people being grasped and held firmly mm -hmm. in these pillars for their ultimate success. Oh, I love that. So do you like teach this as a methodology so that your clients can kind of point back and be like, okay, this is the area of focus for me. I know for you, it's really helpful. Just like my self-control operating system. I know very clearly um, what it is that each and every client is in need of, like within that framework. So is it like beneficial on both ends? I would say it would be beneficial on both ends. I definitely created it initially to keep myself kind of on point. <laughs> and then I've spoken on podcasts and I definitely do talk about it, but it is not a program that I've built. I don't have, it's not like my platform I stand on, but I do believe strongly, obviously in it. Yeah. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. And I know for a fact that people love frameworks. And so, um, I can only imagine that your clients would rally behind that. So 
but oh, it you. obviously has to work first and foremost for the coach. And so you've probably, you know, you have your proof now that it works and I would highly recommend start, you know, dangling that in front of them and they'll probably love it. So you have been known to smash scales. <laughs> I've wanted to smash a few scales in my day. Um, I'm super curious, like, what's that all about? Okay, let's go back to that R and grasp of rewrite the rules to success. And I have so many individuals who that scale number defines their success in the day. It's a good day if the number's good. It's not if the number's bad. And it also, it can crush a soul even when there's been so much beautiful work that's been done ahead of time. And I won't take too much of your time, but for your community to hear this, because they might really be able to resonate. I used to walk when I was at the hospital, I would walk my clients from the waiting room back to the scale as we talked about how their week was. And they would be able to say, you know, I've walked more. I haven't eaten out as much. I've cooked some healthy dinners, like so much positive stuff going on. And then they would get on the scale and Tracy, I'd lose them. Like their, their face would go, you know, and I'm like the, the positive, happy person that I was just talking to wasn't there anymore. By the time we sat down across from my desk, I'm like flipping through their chart thinking they had to have gained 10 pounds. Like they, uh, what happened this week, you know? And a lot of times it was just maintenance. They just didn't lose how they thought they were going to lose or only even lost a couple pounds. And we'd spend a whole hour coming back from that disappointment from the scale just to get them re-motivated to walk back out the door and try for the next week. Mm -hmm. And I just grew so frustrated because you see all these like beautiful, wonderfully made people. It was men and women at the time, but I work mostly with women now. And I always feel like these successful, like they're individuals who are fabulous in so many facets of their life in that one area, just it wrecks their day. And it, and I was over it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have simmered a little bit. I don't, I don't smash as often as I used to, but, uh, I just, it, it's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. And God bless you for really being like the spokesperson for what really should identify you. And it's definitely not three numbers on a scale. So um, I think that that's such a fun thing to kind of be known for is like the, the woman, the accountability coach who smashes scales. All right. So tell us a little bit about like, what does it look like to work with you? I have a ton of clients who have a very strong focus on, you know, um, health and wellness, and um, I want them to know what it would look like to work with you. Yes. So I, I love the membership aspect the best. I still have a few one-on-ones left, but I definitely feel like getting to hold a space where I get to group coach and they get to learn from each other and we get to see each other daily. Um, so to your question, when people work with me, I feel like they get that week of accountability. They get a one-on-one -on -one coaching call within the membership to make sure that their journey is individualized. Yep. And then I also like to pull on other um, professionals to speak over my clients. You know, I love bringing on psychologists to really work on the brain piece and other fitness gurus. So my ultimate goal with clients is to give them the broad perspective, to make sure that we're working on mind, body, all of it. Yep. <laughs> and, and then I do a lot of accountability. I used to, I remember this when I was fresh out of college, I'd give people the information that I thought they needed. And then I'd be like, you know what? I think you're good from here. Like if you, if you want a follow-up session, you know where to find me. And now I'm like, do you want results? Like we need to meet often. It cannot just be a here and there because life happens, right? You right. see this with your clients that we can be so motivated and ready to go. And then a kid gets sick or COVID happens or, or, you know, you name it. And all of a sudden, all of our priorities get shifted on that list. Yeah. I always say that our brain is not a vault. It's a processor. And so 
what that means to me is, you know, we have to be reminded and, you know, having an expert come alongside of us to support us through this journey is such a great, you know, tool. Um, you can't expect your brain to retain all of this information. So you want to teach it how to process. You want to teach it how to think, not what to think and to keep it all locked away. And so, um, yeah, that ongoing maintenance, that ongoing support is so vitally necessary. Um, and it's just, it's all about finding the right tools. So awesome. Right. I, um, I'm curious because this is the secrets of the self-made. I'm curious what you would say is one of your most proudest accomplishments, you know, within your profession, um, what result would you say you're most proud of? So I one time had a podcast guest say the change is in the show up. And I was thinking about over the years, like my career has shifted as time and seasons have provided different ones. And I did write a book. You mentioned that. So that I'm proud of that. And then the podcast, I have a podcast direction, not perfection. But I was like, I think if I had to sum up what I'm truly proud of, I'm proud of that I continue to show up for something that I still have such a passion on my heart to be, I think about if I ever fell away from this work, I would in fact really miss it. I would be bummed that I've missed those years or that time. So showing up would, would be my answer. Okay. And so how do you like, what does that look like? Like showing up is not easy because to me, that means you are consistent. You are um, very clear on what it is that you want to create. Like you've got the clarity. Um, when most people who are really in kind of a purpose-driven business, um, they have to be really clear on why they're even doing this to create that consistency. So I'm curious, like, how do you do that? How do you, for 20 years, how have you stayed consistent and shown up? What's your secret? Accountability. Okay. I was thinking about this the other day too, because I feel like when you're in college, you have accountability of your teachers, you're going to show up. And then out of college, I actually worked in a space in a hospital and there was that accountability and getting to meet with the clients visually and, and enjoy that. And then you, this is where you have coached me. And I'm really appreciative of this. It's the family entering in it's the kid years mm -hmm. and going Oh, I know what I want to do, but I also need to make sure that time and space is available for the family. So it's that juggling act. Mm -hmm. And so coaching is what comes to my mind. I have hired coaches throughout this next phase of the process. So making sure that I have accountability pieces that are in place to keep reminding me like, this is what you keep saying, Lindsay, and this is what it's going to take to get there. And I, I just keep saying if not, it's time to hire that next person, it's time to try that next adventure because my, it just keeps shape shifting what the needs are. And so again, I guess accountability would be my term as yeah. to your question. Yeah. So you make sure that you're held accountable. You make sure that you're in constant pursuit of that next best step you are really clear about what your priorities are like making sure that you know family work has a balance you, which tells me you're operating from your values what would you say is that feeling that emotion that's driving those kind of actions it's a it's a passion driven emotion it's definitely a deep in my soul and in my gut reaction, I always know that I'm supposed to be doing this. And the moments that I have stepped outside of those intentions or my exact path, I have a different feeling that comes with it, which might feel a little wishy-washy to some of your audience, but there is definitely a gut check of, I always know when I'm on the right path, even if it's scary, even if it brings up feelings of self-doubt and all the things that come with it versus there's another feeling that comes when it's like, this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing right now. 
Yep. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of whatever. Yep. Okay. So because I'm all about the mind math and I want to make it really clear for all of our listeners, what Lindsay's secret to being self-made is, if we're going to use the mind math, her thought is I'm supposed to be doing this, which makes her feel passionate, which makes her feel convicted, right? When she's feeling that way, those feelings drive actions that look like getting accountability coaches, um, making sure that she's balancing work and family. She's prioritizing. She's willing to take that next step, even if she's scared, even in the face of fear. She has empathy for herself. Like, of course she's scared, but she's still going to do it anyways. That's how she continues to show up, something that she's really proud of. And I think it's really interesting that her podcast and her book is called Direction, Not Perfection. So she is a living, breathing example of that, right? She's not trying to do it perfectly, but she has her eye on the like goal. She's very clear on what it is. And she believes I'm supposed to be doing this. That drives all of the actions that gets her to this point of being really proud of what she's accomplished. So I will have her mind math, her intentional mind math posted with this podcast as well as on YouTube. So if you want to really understand how her mind works to create that result and really like apply it to your life, I highly recommend looking at her secret because it's a good one. She's been doing this 20 years, you guys. So, um, I will also in the show notes, we'll also be posting ways that you can work with Lindsay. She's got an incredible podcast. So there's paid ways to work with her and there's free ways that you can, um, really glean some of her, um, best practices. Anything else, Lindsay, that you want to share? I just had one more when we were starting to talk about goals and working with clients I'm into this atomic habits book at the moment, James clear. I'm sure you've read it, Mm -hmm. but he really talks about, we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. And I kind of feel like if your community doesn't hear much more than even this, our systems are the things that we have in place that let us not have to think about it so much. So like, as you're saying, I've stuck with this for 20 years, I have systems in place I have habit trackers. I have things that I show up to every day because they're just in place. And it was like that when I was writing the book, it's like that as I release a podcast episode every week, it's a system. It's not something that I'm having to think about every day. And if we're living in the health and fitness world, systems can look like living in your running shoes, living in a sports bra, doing things that are in place that it takes the decision fatigue, the brain work out of, I'm going to go walk right now because sometimes just having to change your shoes is enough for you to go, nope, (laughs) you do it today. And so again, we don't rise at the level of our goals. We're not going to, on the most unmotivated day, make sure our goals happen, but on our most unmotivated day, we will fall to the level of our systems. So maybe we still have things in place that we will accidentally still be healthy or accidentally still show up to our work endeavors. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. I'm so glad we got that in there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay. Like I said to all of our listeners, make sure that you check her out. She's got a phenomenal podcast and uh, she's got a great book out there and she's got programs that really help people. So thank you again for being here. We'll see you you so much, Tracy. Appreciate it.